Got the old man stem, the old Armstrong hunch. Especially with my thick muscle. This is my old book from 1990. So I'm just going to fine tune the hoods. Um, my left side's a little shorter, so I'm going to have this side up just a little bit more. That feels good for me. Um, one thing I've had been having problems with is uh, my line of sight limited from up here. Without my glasses, I'm blind as a bat. So I'm having to crane my neck quite a bit. That's why I have this deeper position uh, with the stem. And um, it is what it is. Otherwise, I'm craning my back and oh my god, that hurts. Uh, it's the problem I was having actually with the gravel bike, so I'm working on the stem position for that. Uh, but this feels really good. Um, I was running a 120, but I've got the stem inverted at the uh, 12 degree. I believe it's 12. 12 degrees. Um, and uh, it seems good. I also found a 100 mil, so um, either way, maybe the 100 mil the op opposite way uh, will feel good too. Um, but I actually don't mind the way it looks. It doesn't bother me one bit. Fit's so much more important than fashion. Um, you got a good fit, you're going to put more power out. There's no question. Fit, power, much better than uh, being uncomfortable in an aerodynamic position and not putting out power, in my opinion. Uh, let's see here. Uh, this is my GoPro mount. Uh, it's aluminum. Hopefully you can see it. Um, yeah, it pivots, swivels. You can do this down here. Pivot it. But yeah, it will rotate a bit on your bars, which is fine. That's why I've got some tape. And that's also why I'm using an alloy bar uh, bar over the carbon bar, because there's going to be a lot of wear and tear on it. And I don't mind if this bar gets a little scratched up. It's already scratched up. And that would just chew the shit out of the carbon bar. So as much as I like the feel and comfort of carbon bars, it's just not practical. So. And believe it or not, this Race X light bar is 230 grams. And that's for an alloy bar, which is really good. The carbon bar that I have is like 205, so who cares? Good enough. And I mentioned before, this is the best seat I've ever bought. And I've tried a bunch of them. Bontrager Evoke RXL carbon rails. You need to get the adapter bracket for the, uh, I think they're 19 mil uh, rails, but um, that's 20 bucks at track cab, not a big deal, um, you need it. Scary thing is you actually have to crank this thing down to 16 newton meters, which is a lot. Um, first few times I had it on, it would just go and that's unsettling too. And it's almost as unsettling as torquing it that much. Anyway. couple of the finer points here made these little uh, protective things uh, out of self bonding uh, silicone wrap um, you can get it at the Home Depot great um, 
cut in strips, put it on, and uh, you know, perfect. Got one down here, one up here, one here, two on the other side, two or one, one. All right, so I'm just going over the sizing and setting it up for my size and fit, personal preferences. I like to set my saddle height with the LeMond method. This is my old book from 1990. Um, a lot of useful information in it. Um, it's got your appendix with your sizing chart. It's inseam times, I believe, 0.883. So for me, that would be 713.5 millimeters from the center of the bottom bracket to where I actually sit. A good place on YouTube is Bike Fit Advisor. It's got a lot of useful information and tips on setting out, up your fit. And to me, that's like the most comfortable thing. Just talk a little bit about these wheels. I uh, love these wheels. I love the look. I love the design. Um, you don't see many of them out there because most of them are broken. <laughs> uh, it is what it is. Um, beautiful spokes, radio laced, non-drive side. Um, and you've got a cross on this side. Um, thicker bladed spokes on the drive side. Slightly thinner bladed spokes on on the other side. They're paired. I believe it's 24-20. And the common problems with these wheels and I've seen in the past is they fracture along the uh, this pair like I said it's absolutely mint um, and yeah I'm not the lightest guy but I'm not the heaviest and I keep my tires inflated and I don't anticipate any problems Lots of clearance in there, so no problems. All right, so the front wheel in detail, um, radio laced, mint condition, and mint decals. It's not even faded. It's, I love it. It's perfect. Um, you've got the matching skewer. Matches the rest of it. Yeah, these are the pedals I put on the XTR ones. The reason being, um, obviously I'm in a, a pretty busy big city here and there's a lot of starting and stopping at traffic. right there peel that back <clears throat> voila might be a little much for some people but for now I like it I hope you've enjoyed this build as much as I have now it's time to take one final look at the bike Thank you.
slopes at the intermediate sprint after 61 kilometers. Stuck around to do a turn on the early slopes of the Tourmalet and that was pretty much his 